One of the most daunting things for beginners looking to trade meme coins is not knowing whether or not something is going to be a scam. The majority of us, including me, don't have any coding experience prior to getting involved in crypto and trying to read smart contract coding can seem like an impossible task. So stay tuned for the rest of the video because I'm going to show you guys some BSC scam basics which can help prevent you from getting scammed. <laughs> to be a coding expert to figure out if a token could be a scam most of the time we just need to know exactly what to look out for today i will be breaking this video down into three different sections how rug pulls and honeypots can occur contract functions to look out for and honeypot scanners that you guys can use to, to help know if a contract is malicious or not so let's first talk about different types of rug pulls and what malicious developers can do to steal funds from a smart contract. Now the first one and maybe the most popular is the liquidity drain. So what a developer does is he unpairs all the liquidity pool tokens and then he just sells them. This will leave zero liquidity left in the liquidity pool so nobody will be able to, to trade. The second way that a developer can do a rug pull is by before launching the token, sending large amounts to the supply to his own wallets and then selling them after launch. A third way to rug pull a project is to mint tokens once the project has already launched and then dump them. And lastly, another really common way that developers like to scam projects is by causing a honeypot. Now this is where the developer will pause or disable sells on the contract so people will be able to buy into the token but then they won't be able to sell. Ready for a later point in the future where the developer will drain all the funds from the project. So now let's go over the important things to look out for to make sure this doesn't happen to you. First of all, once a token's launched, a really important thing to look out for is the liquidity pool being locked. Now once you copy and paste a contract address into BSC Scan, this is the page that will come up. And now we want to be focused on the creator and what the creator is doing. So if you come up here, you can see creator and then this is going to be the creator's address here. So you want to click on that and then you can see some of the creators activity and you can see here that there is a lock tokens transaction and this is one that we're interested in to know if the lock was legit or not so you want to go ahead and click on that transaction hash here now something that you want to look out for is, is this tokens transferred section here now if you don't see anything appearing in this section that means that the token lock was fake and the project is most likely a scam but just because you see some tokens being transferred here doesn't mean that it's legit. Usually when tokens are locked on a certain place, whether that be PancakeSwap, PinkSale or different uh, token lock providers, you will see the name of that provider appearing here. And the fact that here with this token lock that we just see two different wallet addresses. And if we go ahead and click on that. And you can see that this is just a random address with only three holders this can be a big red flag. So when you are looking at the token lock transaction address, maybe the developer will share it in the Telegram group or something like that. You want to click on it. You want to have a look at this transaction. You want to make sure that they've been sent to a token lock place. Usually it would be maybe like Pink Sale or Pancake Swap or any other of the, of the common token locker places. And you want to see that address here, not just some random address. So another quick way other than BSC scan to know if tokens have been locked or not is that after the token's been launched, if you go ahead and have a look at the PooCoin chart, you will see on the left hand, and you refresh the page, you'll be able to see on the left hand side here whether the tokens have been locked or not. If the tokens haven't been locked, then you will see a red warning sign here saying that a large amount of the tokens are currently unlocked. And if nothing comes up like this, and it generally means that a uh, token lock has happened. So another important thing to take into consideration was how many tokens are locked. So you can see here that 22 million and 400,000 about has been locked. So the next thing you want to do is you want to go back onto the, um, the contract token here and you want to click on the name which is meme tennis for this example. And then you want to go down to the holders here. Now in the liquidity pool, um, which is going to be this second one here, because that's where the uh, liquidity has been provided to PancakeSwap. Now you can see here that 
We said before, what was it? 22 million tokens had been locked. As we can see here, there are way more tokens than 22 million currently in the liquidity pool. Uh, so this should be a red flag as well. When we're trading meme coins, another important thing to look out for is a contract being renounced. Once a contract is renounced, it means that the developer cannot access any of the functions in the smart contract and therefore you can't do anything malicious like cause a honeypot or a rug pull or anything like that. So if a developer in a project is claiming that he's renounced the contract, you want to go ahead and go to the creator section again, click on the creator address and you want to find that transaction where he claimed to either renounce ownership or maybe transfer ownership and you want to go ahead into that transaction and then you want to go click here to see more and in this area as well you don't want to see um, any more information you know you don't want to see any different functions in this input data all you want to be you want to see is either the renounce ownership or the transfer ownership and then this address here you want to see a dead address like with all zeros like this and dead at the end and that means that he has uh, renounced the ownership of the contract. If you see here another random address, then it means that he's just transferred the um, ownership of the contract to somebody else. So that's just a few different ways that we can know whether the locking of tokens and the renouncing of the ownership was legit or not. Now, another thing that's really important is the supply and who is holding the supply. Like I was saying, what devs can do, they can put a certain amount of tokens into liquidity, but they can keep a large amount uh, to themselves and send them to different wallets and then dump on the project later on so it's important that once you copy and paste the contract this into bsc scan you want to click on the token name here on the tracker and you want to go ahead into holders because you want to see who's holding this coin and where the token distribution is so let's go through what some of these mean this um new address here this is all the tokens that have been burnt basically these are the dead tokens so you can see 50 percent of the supply was burned at launch and you can see 34 percent was sent into the liquidity and pancake swap and then the rest of these now are the holders of the coin so some red flags that you want to look out for is people that are holding a really large amount of supply you know anything more than a few percent because those guys are the ones that could really cause some damage onto the uh, project and another thing to look out for is whole numbers so if you start seeing um whole numbers like 0.5 percent 1 percent 1.5 percent 2 percent and so on and so forth and you see many of those so you can see like a bunch of people maybe with like five percent of the supply that probably means that those wallet addresses were sent those tokens by the developer before the launch so if those tokens are unlocked then it's also another red flag so the last method that developers like to use to scam projects was the honeypot now that leads into the next section that i want to talk about today because i wanted to go over a bunch of different functions within smart contracts that you guys need to look out for and understand how they work and what developers can do with these functions in order to scam projects so once you can copy and paste a contract address into BSC scan, if you want to look at the, the coding and the functions in the contract, what you need to do is click on this contract bit here. As you can see, this will be the coding of the contract. You can press on toggle full screen here and then you can see all of the coding of the contract is all in here. Now, obviously to beginners, this is going to be impossible to understand. What you can go ahead and do is you're going to go into read contract here and you will see a list of all the different functions in the contract. Now, when we're reading through these functions, the functions that we want to look out for is anything that has pause trading, enable trading, disable trading, anything of that nature in the name. They're the ones we want to be looking out for because they're the ones that the developer can use to pause the trading and to stop people from being able to sell the position. So as we can see here, they have got a uh, number seven is trading enabled. Then when we go to the right contract section, we want to um, find a function that the developer can change in order to pause the contract. And just from going over this one quickly, these, these guys don't have anything like that in the uh, contract, but they're the ones that you want to be looking out for. So another way a developer can cause a honeypot is by changing the sell taxes up to 9900% or something along the lines of that. So what do we want to look out for in the contract to assure that 
the developer cannot do this. Now some contracts have in there max fees. Now normally this is the function that you want to look out for because you want to make sure that the developer cannot set the fees to 99 or 100 percent and cause a honeypot. So sometimes with these functions we won't be able to tell exactly what those fees will be just by looking at the uh, functions in the recontract part. We do actually have to go into the code to read that. So to find this function we are actually going to have to go and look through the code. So what we need to do, we scroll down. We want to get to the, the function section. You can see here now the names of all the different functions within the contract. And we want to scroll down to this section here. Now you can see here they've got an update fee section. And you can see here that the total fees cannot be greater than 10%. And for the cells as well, the total fees cannot be greater than 10%. Now it's not this text that we're interested in, it's this number above here. So if the developer is claiming that the taxes can't be raised more than 10%, but when you look through the, the codes, you see that this number is at 99. That means that the developer can set the taxes to 99%, so that should be a red flag. Now, another really important function to be looking out for when you're looking into the, the functions and the coding is the max transaction amount. Now, this is different than the max fee amount because the max fee amount is talking about the, the taxes and the max transaction amount is talking about the maximum amount of tokens that can be sold within one transaction. Now this is important because if the developer is able to access this function, he can change the max transaction amount all the way to maybe like one token. So then it's gonna be impossible for people to, to sell the tokens. So again, the way we look at that is going into the read and write contract section. And we wanna look for anything to do with max transaction amount. And we can see here, that that's the current maximum transaction amount and the way to figure out the exact amount of tokens is to find out how many decimals the token has which you can find here and that's nine so what you would do is you would take nine zeros away from this number and the number that's left that would be the exact amount of uh, maximum transaction so we go into the right contract section then this is where we want to look for a function that allows the developer to change the maximum transaction amount and you can see here you can um, set a max transaction amount of tokens here. So this is a t this is another function that a developer can use in order to honeypot the project. Now the next function that I wanna focus on is the mint function. So this is the function I was talking about before where a developer might be able to mint new tokens to create a new amount of supply, um, which will then obviously hyperinflate the token, making the tokens less valuable. But then once he sells those tokens, then he will be able to drain most of the funds from a project so it's a very important function to look out for now sometimes mint functions can be written into contracts and be there for legit reasons usually sometimes there is a mint function in the token when uh, the contract is deployed for the first time because tokens need to be minted in order to uh, create them initially and then sometimes they can be written into the contracts but as long as the function is an internal function which means that the developer can't interact with that then generally speaking it's okay so if we see a mint token maybe here in the read contract but then in the write contract um, there is no way for the developers to mint any tokens um, then you know it could be okay so a place in the code where you might see a, a mint function is here in the constructor section and this is pretty normal this is the part of the the code that's needed to uh, create and deploy the tokens in the first place now the last important function that I want to talk about is the blacklist function. Now this function, like like most of the functions we're talking about today, they do have their uses uh, even in meme coins. So just seeing these functions within the contract doesn't mean that the project is going to be a scam. It just means that the project is vulnerable to be scammed if the developer wants to. Um, and the blacklist function is the same. So again, this will appear in the read and write contract section, usually under the word blacklist. This type of function, and just like all the other type of functions, can be hidden sometimes under different names. So, you know, we can do our best to use some of the keywords, but sometimes developers can hide these malicious functions under different names, which makes it a lot harder to find. But that's where the honeypot scanners come into play, which we're going to talk about in a minute. So yeah, just be aware that when you see a contract which has this blacklist function here and something like this, especially this one, multi-set is blacklist. What this function allows a developer to do, it enables him to put multiple addresses into the uh, blacklist at the same time and basically stopping any of the holders from being able to sell their positions. 
And just to finish quickly, just another little function I've seen here is some anti-snipe measures that some contracts have as well. Now we can see here, these guys have got dead blocks they can, they can set, um, which means we're going to the read contract part and we're going to the dead blocks. You can see that they've set two different, so the first two blocks uh, after launch were dead blocks, which means that you will be blacklisted. And just a quick tip for you guys, most of the anti-snipe uh, measures that developers put into their contracts, you will find them under function transfer. So at the top of you type in function transfer and come to this section, this is usually where you will find all the different anti-snipe measures that developers put into their contracts. So normally when we're trading meme coins, we don't have the time to go into BSC scan and to search through all the coding, all the functions, because as we know, Timing can be very crucial when buying and selling these type of projects. So what I do recommend that most of you guys do is you use honeypot scanners. Now there are plenty of different ones out there. I'm gonna uh, leave some links to a few of them, but my preference is just to use some of the Telegram honeypot scanners. Now they're simple to use. All you need to do is you need to copy the contract address and quickly paste it into a group which has one of these uh, bots in there. And then the bot will quickly simulate a transaction and they will let you know if the contract is potentially malicious or not so as you can see here this is one called suspot uh, they all kind of have a similar layout and they will do a simulation of the transaction and they will tell you if the contract is sus or not and also highlight to you some of the functions that maybe look suspicious, but then just give you a general overview of, of the token and its taxes and its liquidity, market cap ratio and all that kind of important stuff as well. Another couple of important Telegram channels that you can follow as well is channels just like this one, the TUF, BSC Contract Simulator. So every time that there is a contract uh, deployed onto the BSC, this uh, contract simulator will evaluate it. It will tell you if the contract is safe or not, show if there's any functions that you need to look out for. And it also shows you how many times this contract has been deployed before, so how many times it's been forked by different developers, and how many of those were legit projects and how many of those were scams. So you can see if contracts are unique, if these contracts generally are used for scams or not. So it's uh, yeah, definitely a channel that can definitely help you out a lot in terms of speed. So that's just a bunch of basics that you can learn. That's not too difficult. So you can be more comfortable in knowing whether to invest in meme coins or not. So if you did get something out of this video and you are new here, please do subscribe to the channel. I make a bunch of videos like this. Also on upcoming DeFi projects and airdrop opportunities and all that good stuff. I do also have a Discord community. So I will leave the link to that in the description of this video. So you can come and join us over there as well. So guys, that's it for today. Thanks for listening as always, and until next time, bye.